This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. Yeah. Dave knows we ain't nothing but non-classy. <laughs> How are you doing? I miss you. I miss you guys too. You got the secret service with you. I do. It makes me look important. <laughs> you guys are best dressed in quartzite for sure. There you go. <laughs> you got to make us look fancy, you know. Spencer Opals, folks. The legendary Spencer Opals. You might have seen them in Jogs. They're here at the court site, uh, like main room at the powwow. So kind to show us some of their new stuff. Do you still oh, look at oh, that? Oh, I do. There we go. I don't know what the better lighting is for it's you. It's explosive. Isn't that cool? Thank you. That one was just a cool piece. I just love the red in it. Oh, wow. So... Yeah, we got lots of new pink stuff. This guy right here, we're doing a lot of like the actual like hot pink, hot pink ones now. I'm probably not the one to hold it because I am pink to start with. I need somebody <laughs> with some better skin tone than me. You have a great skin color. Yeah, it's called lobster. Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Look how affordable that is, folks. So we um, we were just talking about how a lot of these new these pinks that are new to you this year actually came out this year. Yes, everything that you see in the cases, um, we actually half of these I mounted last night and brought in. What? So yeah, so like these guys right here, uh, that whole road that's right there in front of Cade. But uh, yeah, like all of these guys are basically we trucked them all in here this morning. Nope, I just came to visit. Hello, hello there. How are you guys? I am awesome. How are you doing? It is so cute. <laughs> so Spencer Opals, for those of you that don't know, are from uh, Spencer, Idaho. And where they do come in a lot of colors, whites and blacks. Uh, here's a great example. Some darker ones. The pinks are really unique to Spencer. When you think of pink opal, uh, not from Spencer, you usually think of like the Australian or the Peruvian, but it's not a fine opal, not a precious opal like these are. How about yourself? Yeah, always. Like, you, usually, yeah, you gotta be busy because you have a puppy. Well, actually, this one's my so, sister. Oh, okay. So I spent Mine time is in the about, Republic of Georgia. I just adopted a rescue uh, that was nine months yeah. old. Oh, how that fun. That is um, Blue Healer. Oh, I had a Blue Healer when I was a kid. I loved do you know them. if these go here, brother? So yes, they do. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh, She's awesome. way too smart. And we got a lot of yellow stuff coming out this year. Oh, that is explosive. And it's not hydrothane. It is not um, anything other than just its usual that's the sulfuric deposit that we had been talking about so that's what gives it that real yellowy color in there and we even did jewelry out of that to match I had a piece of where's that really yellow necklace that I had that came out there I got a hotter one than that <laughs> so you just have to come down the cases Oh, Here's a piece that's off of it, Dave. Oh, wow. So, because a lot of people, you know, they know we do the traditional opal and the triplets and everything else, but you don't think about, like, the yellow and the pink and that kind of stuff. And yellow, actually, for us, would probably be a little bit more rare than the pink just because it is that sulfuric deposit and you just don't see it where it's real stable all the time because sulfur makes the opal unstable sometimes. Oh, wow. So a lot of times the yellow stuff, if you put it to your tongue, it's hydrothane. These are all these are all perfectly cured, no issues, no problems, no nothing. <laughs> that is amazing. So, and like I said, dig into anything you want. We got it all out to look fancy, so. Could you, could you? Oh, I'm going to wait a moment so we can enjoy. I'm lucky enough to know you folks. Well, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I was worried, I was worried you weren't going to be down here. No so. way. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you'll be in jogs, though. 
When does Jog start? It's a little bit earlier than the Wednesday. other ones. Wednesday. Damn. That's yeah. so you got. So we're going to close here Sunday night. We will drive down Monday, set the trailer up and everything. Probably go and load Monday night, set up Tuesday, open Wednesday. Oh, wow. And we're doing a lot of... These have been... We are doing like a whole line of like affordable engagement rings nowadays because these are moissanites, so you don't have to worry about diamond prices. So that's $198. Oh, that is a steal. Yeah, so if you want to do, uh, we do like a whole engagement line now of, you know, super affordable things for people because, you know, everybody needs to have something nice, right? Absolutely. So even we do these guys with the teeny tiny ones on it so you can have real classy stuff. This one's really nice. Yeah, that one is... This one right here is brilliant out of the, if you get it going in the right direction, it's like yellow and red. And still so affordable. And we did a whole lot more stones this year. We did uh, a lot of 25, 35, $40 stones so that people could enjoy doing their own work and that kind of stuff this year. So we tried to hit a lot more DIY type stuff for people because I noticed last year there were so many people that had gotten into metal smithing and wire wrapping and stuff like that during the pandemic because they were all so bored. So now we're doing a lot more um, just stones and stuff like that for people so that they can do their own. Oh, fantastic. You know? So the full the, monkey. The, exactly. Might as well get, you know, completely rough to completely finished. Do you mind if I uh, you show me this? Yeah, of course. This one's kind of cool. It's the full geode pocket. Oh, that is amazing. I imagine these are not for sale. These oh, are yes, for sale. Really? Are. Oh, wow. They're, they're going to be, those are going to be a little fatter price tag on those guys. They're one of a kind. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But like that piece off that's of that. kind of the same. Oh, that's from the same stone? Not yeah. from the same exact stone. Well, but from the top, that was yeah. from the top of that piece. Okay. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, from the same stone. That is explosive. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do it. We'll take it Oh, the thank box, you, brother. a little light. There you go. Damn. Fantastic. This is another little fun ring we did. <laughs> Different little style we tried out for the show. Seems to be pretty popular too. Yeah, that's a, that's a real modern style. Mm -hmm. Then, it's not too blingy, but it's very blingy. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> Just enough. Facebook dubbed this one the steak when we posted it online because everyone thought it was a steak. <laughs> it's seasoned with glitter. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is my new... Uh, and then it's solid. It'll go all the way down. It is seasoned with so have all the layers going down. And each one of those lines could be better or worse than that. It's real cute to make it beautiful. Oh, man. I, I wouldn't cut it. Oh, uh, that's where we're at. It's too beautiful. Yeah, that is... It catches too many, One too much attention. Erin, how long has your family been working the um, dispenser open? Actually, we figured that out, right, my mom and I, right before we came down to this show. Uh, my grandparents bought it initially in 1964, but didn't open until 68. So if you're going strictly from the time <laughs> they bought it to now, we're officially 60 years this year. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. There's got to be some kind of special color or gift for 60 years, right? I, I, I should look it up. I mean, I have the boys make me something. For then. anniversary. <laughs> my, my golden, I don't even know if that, that's past golden, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, uh, we are officially 60 years from the time my grandparents bought it this year. Oh, man, congratulations. That's a, it's an empire now. <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> <laughs> well, I finally made it to the fact where I can tell the boys what to do. So, I mean, that makes me feel oh, good about yeah. myself, right? <laughs> that is fantastic. So, yeah, we're four generations. So the boys are, Don't you know, when you talk to Leo last year, these right guys, hand. these guys are all your fourth generation people. So Amazing. Was, did we have Opie last year? No, I don't think you did. Oh. I can't remember. I think I would remember. <laughs> it's so amazing. That, so our mine is the original name for it is the Lost Deer Hunt Mine because oh, wow. two guys were lost out deer hunting and found in the opal mine. Well, that they found on the mine and he's a deer skull 
So there is the lost deer hunt from the Deer Hunt Double Mine. <laughs> you can take as many of those as you need. We have a plethora. Of <laughs> and here also is our digging information too on the back of this one if you ever decide you want to do your own digging. Who wouldn't want to? <laughs> I know, right? Got some good example pieces to show people how triplets are made. It's just fantastic. So much work and so much passion in everything you folks do. Well, it keeps us out of trouble at least. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so folks who haven't watched that the video from last year, you do a lot of the jewelry. Yes. You are the jeweler. I do. I do everything that's silver. Got her mandrel uh, here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I actually like was make. I was late this morning because I made jewelry and brought it in. But uh, I do all the silver stuff still. And my son that is in the fancy plaid suit over there, he is my goldsmith and. You know, the one over there looking like Shakespeare. That's my goldsmith. That's oh, it. Gotta hold it up. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Alas, poor dear, I knew him well. Alas, <laughs> poor Yorick, for I knew him well. That is fantastic. He's a cool dude. How long has Opie been around? About five years. Yeah, we've had oh, cool. Five years. He's been our mascot for a long time, but this is when we actually pull him out of the store and let him enjoy something. Yeah, we take awesome. him on a trip every once in a while, make you feel good about it. I like life. to just carry him around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get him out of the house, you know. So, yeah. Here, I'll trade you spot. And feel free to grab a stone off of there if you want. Thanks, buddy. On these cards, are these the prices? Yes. That is a fantastic price for these. You would expect three or four times. That's the good thing about triplets. With them, it kind of brings that good color flash that people are really looking for, but still is good for the wallet, too. Yeah, and um, like so resilient. If you accidentally yes, exactly. scuff it up, you're not digging it back into the colors. It takes on the hardness, goes about an eight. So if you're hard on stuff, triplets. Yeah, and if you need to repolish it, you're not digging in your color bars exactly, and not stuff. Taking away cut carrot weight. Somebody from Cal spots them? Yeah, they got a uh, big specimen. Oh, that's where I live. Oh, okay. That's cool. I'm going to go hunt it down. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, this guy. Oh, Tal Silver. That's the lady's name is, ironically, her name is Turquoise. Oh, really? Yeah, and yeah then, they, I, I don't know the gentleman. I only know the uh, lady. I think it's Emilio. I think Emilio. It's his, yeah, yeah, that's his name. Uh, but yeah, they uh, got one of our specimens to put into their collection. So. Did, it, did this happen today? Yeah. What's funny is I've been always meaning to meet them. I always miss them. They're supposed to be back in tomorrow, huh? they said. So yeah, they, said they come for the show again tomorrow. You'd think I would just go to town and find them, but it's, it just hasn't worked out you so far. Think. Do you see the really cool, this, how red and green that, like, you might have to pick it up for whatever's better for you, but that one is a... Oh, man. That yeah, one that is one a... That one is a real flashy flashy baby there but the cool part about that one that one like black spot that's kind of in the center of it that you can see mm -hmm. if you put it under magnification it's metal wild it's um marcasite and do you know how hard it is to get metal to form inside of opal never heard of it ever okay so we have 
we've been looking at these over the course of the summer. We've got marcasite and pyrite crystals in them and dendrites. It's hard to get dendrites in opal. So hard. But this one piece... Are you better at putting that back than I am? Oh, I'm sorry. Fine. You're probably a pro. There's, there's not Kay. anything that you're going to do to it that's going to hurt it, But then the other uh, thing is we've been finding is uh, dendrite formations in them. And you hardly ever get dendrites in opal. And so my plan now is to put them under like a little magnification photography thing. So you can see a picture of the dendrite and then you can have the stone... I don't know if I'll have them ready for jogs, but I'm hoping. I mean, so. it's so soon. It's in three days from now. When you're getting out of here tomorrow night. Well, I have all of these three guys to work in the booth while okay. I stay home. Yeah, Because we, we have a house out here. So we actually live down here in the wintertime. So I do have a fully functional Oh, fantastic. Job. I was wondering, like, is your silver rig in your like rv or something no no i have a full-on actual working shop down here but like this guy right here this is a great example of it that kind of grayish purple right there if you get it under magnification they're dendrites i like your opal thank you they look pretty good so yeah so that's something that you just yeah, don't see every day oh, nice. so we're working on some magnification photos and that kind of stuff of those it was made here fantastic price for such a special oh this opal comes from spencer is that right that is right we mine it all cut it all i beg your pardon i don't know where it came from oh right here oh, you right? Were and this is my other egg. By no means is this like the most glorious stone ever, but I think it looks like an Easter egg, and it's my favorite of the uh, Leo cut that one right before I came down here, but I thought it was kind of groovy. It is definitely Well, if you look at it, it's uh, the color bars actually go across this way, and then there's one that goes this way, so it's actually... So this rock right going here, in the wrong direction like for an opal, and it will never but it's really cool nonetheless. So, yeah. Lots of new stuff, lots of, you know, like I said, a lot of stones for people to do their own jewelry work, uh, triplets and solids. I got trays and trays full of those out there. So if people... as well. Yeah. Who's calibrating those things? Um, oh God, that is mm -hmm. tough, dude. That is no fun. I don't, I don't care what people offer me. I just can't promise them that it's yeah. going to happen. It's hard, but it's, it's harder enjoyable. than you think. <laughs> I'm very impressed. How long have you been cutting, brother? Um, I've been cutting for about six months. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we probably have great teachers. Um, they actually, for the most part, have had me learn how to do it myself and then tell me where I have gone wrong and then see where I can make it better on my own. Trial by fire, man. Yep, but the nice best way to do it. it is, he's not really burning it down. I mean, he takes all the pointers you give him and does better. There again, the yellow stuff. It does not need to be kept in water, but it definitely helps you see what the color looks like. Absolutely. If you're going to... Hey, Kay, grab the big flashy red one that's in the clear over. Yeah, that one. looking for the stone itself, or do you want it into Could go either way. That one? Because we do have... Oh, wow. These stones right here. Look at this turntable of stones, that one, we have opal stars over there. And, and then we've got another one on this other side that's got even these more flash to it. Like these two right here. Yeah. Ooh. Ain't that the Yes. Same stone. Yep. This is what I need. They're pretty cheap. I think it's like 40 bucks on eBay. That are so unique. The amazing thing is, no matter which way you go, you can see a slightly different pattern. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we've got some jars where you've got all three colors of them. This has the white, the pink, and the yellow. So the white's on the top, the pink's on the bottom. The white, the yellow, and the pink. That is so cool. And I tried to do better this year by bringing more examples because when people were talking about doing triplets versus solids, I don't know how hard it'll be to see this one on camera, but when you glue your opal onto the basalt to make a triplet, when you cut it apart, there mm. you can see, but a lot of people will ask us, what does it look like if it's not a triplet? Well, there's the mirror image that still has color in it. Oh, yeah. 
So there's. How are you getting it so thin? Is it special equipment? Just a good touch with a traditional lapidary saw? Traditional lapidary. We use all Diamond Pacific stuff. Oh, I would have thought. Have you seen those new wire saws that nope. people are selling? I've never used one of those in our entire life. They so, would probably slow you down at this point. You're so good. Probably. My mom watches TV and trim stones. That's what Leo looking. was telling me. And you know, I have put a tablet, and every time I try, I always think of your mom. Uh huh. And I'm like, I don't have it yet. And I'm cutting turquoise, which is a million times oh, easier. Oh, I know. I watch your lives all the time. <laughs> it's like, so I, easy. Every, every once in a while, I try not to, you know, meddle, but every once in a while, I get in there and say hi to you guys. Oh man, I am the pro lurker. Uh -huh. I, I I love lurking and I fall asleep and I join their live <laughs> properly and then they want to talk and I'm like I fall oh, no. asleep and I've actually joined somebody's live as a guest asleep and woke up and I'm like what the hell oh damn because I would accidentally request to join their live nice. with my nose but I thought that that was a really great example as to kind of the before and after between what a solid and a triplet look like because that is virtually a mirror image that is so awesome that you and actually took the time. Uh, Leo was the one that cut that apart because he's got a lot finer touch than I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that boy could probably saw that in half again and still have color. Oh man, I am a stone mutilator. He is very impressive. Uh, yeah, I was in his shop the other day before we came down here to Arizona, and he was doing the same thing. He was actively running his own live for something else cutting stones and talking to me at the same time i'm like <laughs> that is more talent than i will ever possess even like i can't even walk and chew gum at the same time so <laughs> this is a good example of the difference in thickness that you can find so this piece has a, about a quarter inch color bar compared to one that, from the side profile you can't even see it yeah it's wild uh, this one actually got nicknamed um, Aurora Bora because from this side it looks like the Northern Lights. And then that side, the color flash creates a mountain range. Fantastic. Oh man. Oh yeah, All right. lots and lots I, and I lots. hate to be the same thing every year. I even brought Idaho with us. Did Kate show you my fancy little Idaho? So, you know, <laughs> I gotta bring Idaho to you, but it has some really cool, you know, gotta represent the state, right? Represent, for sure. Exactly. So, give a little spot right there where we are. <laughs> where, where at? We would be right here in Idaho. So we'd be out on the tip of the boot. How cold is it over there right now? Uh, my husband said it was minus 41. Oh, and he was thawing pipes. That's the other thing, the other reason why Leo didn't come too is um, he had the flu and then all of our pipes froze because it was minus 41 for four days. So Leo and my husband Kurt were thawing everything out um, because they're kind of the only ones at home, but we have a plethora of cats. And oh. Lord knows the cats live better than the humans. Oh yeah. So, uh, they are they're making sure that everybody's you know well watered and happy <laughs> this one is a piece of that big steak piece but oh, wow. you can see if you turn it sideways that's all opal see all the layers in it oh wow so there's where when people are talking about the differences in opal formation and stuff you can really see the um, eruption and cooling of the geyser there because you can see all that layering effect of where the water filled and then receded and made all of those layers in there. So the one that we've cut on top looks real nice, but what about the rest of them? Who knows what's in those? Is that, is the, is that unique to Spencer? Is that, is that, is I know that there are other places where opal is multi-layered and multi, I guess, 
formed, but ours forms a little bit different than everybody else's because it's not a wood replacement or a clamshell or pseudomorph or anything like that. It is literally uh, the eruption of the geyser and then the recession and um, basically evaporation. Uh, and that's what settles all those layers in there. So I don't know if any place else as of right now does, but that is unique to the geyser system as far as I know for our stuff. And if you go over by Yellowstone Park and stuff like that, you will see a lot of common opal formations in that same kind of run, but not anything that has the coloration in it like ours does. Have you ever seen a different opal, another opal that had obsidian with it like yours oh uh, the honduran opal is oh um, interesting so that makes sense actually. well it's not obsidian it's basalt um but it's in that real porous basalt so it has kind of that black look to it to start with but as far as i know um because of the way it formed their basalt's also really really porous so i can see where it would have percolated down through like all the little porous veins in that but you can get um, a lot of different kind of geyser formations. You know, the stuff out of Nevada is that wood replacement. So the water just flowed in and kind of, you know, instead of agatizing the wood, it opalized it. That is amazing. So it, there's, there's so much different stuff out there. Ultimately, opal is always hot water. It's always a gem silica. But how it forms based on the location is always different. We just have the, I guess, the luck to be right next to the Yellowstone Caldera because if you went from where we are to Yellowstone, straight line across, it's like 60 miles. So we were probably at one time part of that hot spot because the hot spot never moves, but the Earth's crust does. So who knows? There might be opal mines out there that I bet you in a couple million years, Yellowstone is going to be like the most glorious opal mine you've ever oh, seen. Oh, wow. Can you imagine? Yeah, not even. <laughs> that is incredible. That would be a sight to see. Wouldn't it, though? I don't know if I ever asked you, do you does your family have a private collection? Yes. That's good because a lot of people yeah. sell everything and they retire and they don't have the best stuff. We are actually going to bring some of it to Tucson for a oh, wow. kind of like a exhibition exhibit kind of thing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to bring anything that I wouldn't sell. But, you know, you, if you saw that real hot pink one over oh, there, yeah. that's going to represent the pink. And then we have a massive yellow one in a giant thing that I call the golden globe because it's like a giant globe about this big and it's full of one piece of yellow that we um it's broken down into several pieces but it's big <laughs> so we'll have like a yellow representation we're gonna do the pink and then I have a couple really killer white specimens to really show the variety all the way across of like the coloration and the mineralization and stuff like that and when you say Tucson you mean like in four days yes oh, okay this Tucson yes oh this very Tucson. exciting I'm so gonna come buggy if you don't will, mind oh absolutely they'll <laughs> be they'll be in the booth with us in jogs so we'll bring some some real fancy stuff down there just to you know like we always try to have something for everyone because not everybody's going to spend five hundred thousand dollars on a stone you know i want to have something for every person but there's also you know a certain point when you're like i want to show this stuff off <laughs> you know oh I mean? yeah as you should <laughs> i mean it's so fantastic and even though it's been around for decades I think it's still pretty new. I mean, you get it all the time. I bet people come in; they had no idea. I have people that come from 60 miles, like down in Idaho. Oh Falls, no way! Like, we didn't even <laughs> know you existed. And I think, you know, like, being a family business is a blessing and a curse. I absolutely love it because you know I hang out with the kids all day. You know that kind of stuff. We are a really close family. But at the same time, you only have so many people, so you don't have the ability to have somebody that's a full-time social media person. You don't have a, you know, somebody that's just for marketing like larger corporations have. And I think the last couple of years, we've been trying to do that a lot more to really get the name out there. Um, you know, for example, after Tucson, after the jog show, I'm coming back here to Quartzsite um, to the Rock Club to do another demonstration with them to kind of help 
you know, guide them as to, you know, how to cut this or, you know, a little bit of a demonstration for that so they can do their own. And we're trying to do that a lot more, really get out there and do more educational type things with people because like I said, they don't know that we exist. And so hopefully that'll kind of get us a little more. I think it definitely will. And I got to tell you the truth. I love your voice so much in your videos. I hope you do more. I know you, oh, you have to find time to do it. There is nothing worse than listening to the sound of my own no, voice. No, <laughs> I, I, I understand big time, but I love it so much. It I watch is, all your videos. It is absolutely terrible. No. Oh my gosh, I hate listening to my voice. No, and good. I think that's everybody. You know, don't oh, get me wrong. Yeah. I can talk all day. I just don't want to <laughs> hear it back. <laughs> I love your voice and I love your videos. I can't, I'm always looking forward to more. Do you mind if we look oh, at that? Yeah, pull, pull whatever you want off. Like I said, you're always welcome in my booth. We're trying to do more, you know, men's type jewelry and that kind of stuff. Because all my boys, you know, my actual boys or, you know, the ones I've gotten as bonus, all love the jewelry. They're all wearing big fancy stuff. Fantastic. You know, so this is the one that I thought was really interesting. And... When you're done looking at that, I'll show you could this I, one. Could I trouble you to take that off? Oh, sure. Sorry. I got ice cream cone fingers, so they get stuck. Oh, I know. That guy does uh, electric park, too, and I always go over and get ice cream from him, too. Oh, man. So he always comes in here and, like, shows us the new stuff. So this, you know, like, I know that our stuff is not a wood replacement, but doesn't that very much look like a piece of wood? Oh, yeah, it sure does. You know? because there's almost nothing organic from our place that survived the heat of the hot springs. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of odd to me to find more stuff this year, like the metal inclusions and the dendrites. So I'm wondering if we might get down to something that might be an actual fossil one of these days. I bet you will. I mean, like for as long as you've been working, I'm under the impression that you haven't really scratched the surface too hard. No. Um, according to the people that did all of our quarterling and stuff like that at the rate we mine, we're good for about another 350 years. <laughs> so, I mean, I better get these boys working on it because yeah. I'm hoping to one day find like an entire opalized T-Rex, you know. Oh, I wow. know it probably is not, you know, in the card for that kind of thing, but. All right, I'm not as fancy as the boys. I don't know how they had that set up there. That was impressive. That's <laughs> why I was asking. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to put it there in my tie fix. So, I don't see too many jars. Will there be more in Tucson? I had this whole thing lined up and yeah, they're already gone. that so, is good. Yes, so uh, that is my project for the next couple of days is I've got a couple of buckets of rough to take down to because traditionally, you know, in jogs, you sell a lot more uh, finished and mm -hmm. refined type stuff. But after um, the last couple of years, people have been coming by looking for rough a lot more. Yeah, they, it so, seems to be more public friendly than it used to be. Yeah, it is definitely more like public access than it was. And I appreciate that because then it gives everyone the chance to come in and gander around, you know? So we're gonna have a lot more rough. We'll have some more jars. Uh, we'll have the high-end jars and that kind of stuff. We'll have probably a few more of those babies and see what we can get done. Fantastic. And you, you know, unfortunately in a lot of different opal culture, the jars are like sand art. Yes. And you guys don't play around. You're giving them five, six, seven times profit, not just doubling their money or anything. That is kind of the way that I view it, is if you're going to spend $500 on a jar or $100 or whatever you're going to spend on a jar, I expect that you should be able to get that much back out of it in product. Because the way I see these is somebody's going to take these and they might be like a new cutter or maybe they're an advanced cutter and they want to make something to resell, they absolutely can out of this. Because I don't want to be the person who does stuff that is unattainable. Mm -hmm. I think that it should be accessible for everyone. You folks are really kind. A lot of folks don't see things that way but nowadays. I, I think that that is a lot of my mom in me because my mom was always about you not only need to provide a good product, but you need to provide the education that goes along with it. That's why when people buy this kind of stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, we always ask them, do you need cutting instructions? We have a full printed set of cutting instructions. Oh, cool. So if somebody buys one of these and it's their first time trying it out, they have a literal step-by-step -step guide. So yeah, you know, education is always key. You know, inform the people of what you're doing so that they're not having a bad time of it because if they have a good time 
and they cut a nice stone, they're going to come back and see me again. So folks um, that would like to purchase internationally, do you have a problem with shipping to Germany or no. Sweden or anything? As long as they don't mind paying the shipping, we will ship it anywhere you want to go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah, we, we absolutely will ship anywhere you want. And the, something that we're doing different with these jars as well, and I don't know if you can see it from there, but there's a tray sitting out there. Those are all individually priced pieces. So if somebody doesn't want a whole jar, and you can even pull that tray up there. Oh, thank you. Put the, spritz up on it. the spritz. Yes, because none of those guys are polished, so I don't want to miss you along with it. But, but yeah. So if you wanted to just do one piece, five dollars, ten dollars, you don't have to do a five hundred dollar job. You could do just one piece to try it out. Yeah, I mean, fifty dollars. That if you window that, you could get two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. And like this one right here where it's got like that real green red flash to it. I'm noticing a lot of teals that I don't see in other opals as commonly. Is teal a more common color for you guys? For ours? Yeah, yes. That is they, awesome. There's a teal color and there's like this really fancy like electric purple color. If I'm not, that's kind of like around the edge of here, like that purple color around the edge of that. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's a little bit more of a rare color to the Mexican and the Australian, right? The teal? Uh, I see it in the Australian more than I do in the Mexican. In the Mexican, you'll see a lot of red orange you do get some of that kind of purple and variants of that but i'm not 100 percent sure on an australian or a mexican or you know even an ethiopian opal but what determines the color pattern in ours is how it cools so each one of those layers if it cooled in the right time and temperature the molecules that are in there will kind of line up and make a little net and however loose or tight that net is when those little molecules come together determines how bright your color is and what kind of color you have so the looser or tighter the net depends on your play of color and the like variants of color that you get in it red is almost always the last color to form um, or at least traditionally was, but I'm wondering if that real electric purple and the teal aren't maybe one beyond that. Um, and I'm no geologist by any means. No, <laughs> I, I completely pick up what you're putting down, especially since because it's, you don't see it that often, hardly at all. You folks are the the formation is so unique, and you you see it a lot in yours. Mm -hmm. So it, I think you're on the money with that. And see, the other thing that I don't see a lot in other stuff is this kind of where it'll go that real gold color too. And I don't know if it picks up on camera as well, but I'll let you do that because you kind of like that gold color that pops up right there. You do not see that a lot in other things too. Now the Ethiopian enjoys the fact that it has that yellow background to start with, but you almost never see that real like yellow gold color as coloration in the opal, at least not in our stuff a whole lot either. So who knows, maybe we're finding stuff hmm. now that we haven't seen before. Um, do you ever feel like year to year from the diggings you can see a difference like this year was producing something that the last hasn't or yes the years because past. honestly the further down we dig the better it gets oh man yeah so <laughs> especially like with the pink stuff and that kind of stuff you know you get this coloration of pink which is kind of that light blush color in the background well then you get that real fancy dark pink like that one over there they're getting progressively darker the further down you go Oh, wow. Exciting. So, so the best is yet to come, guaranteed. We hope. You know, <laughs> and the bummer part about it is these guys will be around longer to see what's down there before I will, you know. Oh, my. My, son, my son's like, we just need to build like an elevator that goes to the bottom. <laughs> oh, boy. Just core it all out. We've had, we've had a core drilled a couple of times, and it's far deeper than we could think. Man, that is fantastic. But this one's a really cool piece because you can actually see when you turn it sideways and see the there again you can see that layering in there. I would want to try to keep that during setting. This one I have a ring that's made out of that one too. Yeah. The ring that matches the other or did we sell it? The ring that's the other piece of that three piece set? No, Oh there it is. Yeah, so on this one, this is actually the third piece out of that set. We left it so you could see it has windows on the side of it so you can see the Layering. Yeah. yeah. Did you design that setting? Oh no, that's that one. He's a. Oh. <laughs> he, lost wax. He's he's the lost wax man. That is awesome. Really classy. 
Modern, but also traditional. Yeah. I was trained by a guy who had 60 years of experience. In lost wax fabrication? Yes, and he also did 3 design as well. Yeah, they oh. have a 3D he printer. He taught me how to design uh, via 3D and also the traditional style, so I do a little bit of both. The future is now, man. Exactly. And it's good that you're on it. Are you going to be like, I wish. I don't know. Mm -hmm. How old are you, brother? 22. Oh, damn. Just a kid. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the middle child. Leo's 23. He's 22. So. Leo looks like he's 14 years old. I, so does <laughs> he if he shaves. Yeah. <laughs> Leo, Leo has professionally got the baby face. That's why every time I take him somewhere, I took him to Vegas and we did like the ice bar and everything. And that lady eyed him up. She's like, is this a fake ID? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. That's okay. I will 100% take some nice lady in here earlier. Ask me if these were my brothers. I'm like, <laughs> I will take any of that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I'm Nothing about you or any of your friends in my booth. I would like to, you know, say thank you, especially because you know how many people came into my shop over the course of the summer and were like, we saw you on Lapidary Day. Oh, really? Yeah. All the time. All the time. And the boys are like, you know, these boys, you know, because of course Leo knows, these boys are like, was lapidary dave i'm like don't worry at some point we will find him or he will find us so it, it's nice to you know have you are you familiar with the spencer not overly i mean i've heard of it jeez louise this, this is the really cool yeah that is amazing steak it is really oh, wow. that it is really that color it's not heat treated yeah. it is not um, dyed, it is not stabilized, our stuff is stable as it sits, and it really is that color. Great videos. Oh, thanks, man. Great I appreciate content. it. Thank you. So, yeah, that's the nice part about our opal is we, as far as we know, we are the only place in the world where you get a stable pink opal with that kind of color in it. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that, is, that is a fancy guy right there, because this one, these are actual Take little pieces off of it. Can I trouble you to put this back? We've no, no Kind of one-handed and... Like, we've actually oh, okay. with it and that kind of stuff. So these are all little pieces walk around and look at some of the rough. Gonna have to suck it in. <laughs> oh, that one's really gentle. Mm -hmm. Same sort of style as the other ones, just a little softer. Okay. And you get more of like a blue yeah. purple color flash that with the red, is which is kind of cool. Does that say three? No, twenty five hundred. I'm going to say, I knew it wasn't three hundred dollars. This is so rare. Yeah. They also have some nice ones like this one. It's all the way down to hundred dollars. That one's kind of cool because you can see all the different ways it flowed in when it was still in a liquid state. How are you doing? Good. But we don't have enough. Oh wow, boom. Mm -hmm. so find something like as soon as it hits the right direction, it's, it's there. Will you at some point? Um, so you do a lot of cutting. Yes. Uh, is the cutting process, are you using, you're using Diamond Pacific, yes. which is awesome, dude. You don't have to play with some, have you used anybody else? No, I haven't. You're gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's not, it's not like a little bit better. It's night and day. You're not going to, yeah, you're going to think it's a joke. Yeah. But, um, so, for your pre-polishing, how far are you going? I assume 80 for roughing, 220 for roughing? So, honestly, I start at 180 to take off the light light and the obsidian, and mm -hmm. then work my way up to 600, and then 1200, and then polish. So, it's from 1200 to the polish. Yeah. Oh, interesting, because a lot of the traditional machines will have 3000, but, for instance, like agates, a lot of pro agate people, and back in the day, so the silicon carbide only went to 600. They said if you did that right, you hit it with cerium, and you got a great polish. I mean, so you guys know your opal, so 12. And then, if you don't mind me asking, is it a cerium? Is it a lindier, aluminum oxide, tin oxide, I've diamond? Used, I've used aluminum and cerium oxide, and it really kind of just depends on what you're polishing, whether you're polishing stones or specimens, because if you're doing specimens where you want a real smooth, really high gloss finish I'll do a cerium because to me on that real big flat plane like when I'm polishing the big stuff mm -hmm. it almost works easier if I'm polishing just stones aluminum oh awesome yeah so, that is great information. and it kind of depends on whether you're doing the solids or the triplets because the quartz 
if you're doing triplets, needs a heavier duty polish because quartz is harder to polish. Right, so. exactly. And that's uh, one beauty about the quartz triplets is you can always repolish it. Yes, yeah. you if can. You're, if your clumsy husband is dropping your jewelry all over the, the granite you know, table. Even, even the stuff like I wear, I've repolished that ring probably five or six times. I even took a giant chunk out of the middle of it and kind of polished it out. But no. it's, I polished it twice. So. Um, so something I really admired that you were making on one of your videos is you were making some rings specifically for people with arthritis. Mm -hmm. Well, they also look great too. You don't have yeah, to have all, you don't have to have arthritis. That's that's these guys right here because they're square. So I need somebody with a skinnier finger to come here. So you can see where he's got like knuckles. Like you can actually turn them sideways. I should have got a bigger one. And it goes over your knuckles, and then you sit it straight like that, so it can't spin around. Fantastic. So yeah, but it works out really good because then um, you don't have that panic like I can't get it over my knuckle. Oh, yeah. I gotta cut my ring off. I've had my ring cut off before. No. I don't do that again. So square rings. They're the, they're the thing. My grandma uh, had really bad rheumatoid arthritis when I was little. So I started that when I, when I learned how to silversmith, I would make her those because then she'd get them on. And she's, grandma's gone, but the, the tradition lives on, you know? So if you don't mind me asking, is, are you like bending it or do you have a square mandrel or? Uh, we have like, I have a jig where you just like Perfect. put them out like, cause you can do them smaller, larger. We do kind of like a small, medium, large version of that. And the boys are working on like a CAD, like 3D printed version in gold. Because I had a lot of people ask us like, hey, you know, could you do them in gold for like a wedding ring or something like that? So these guys are working on that too. Oh man, So never stopping, only ne speeding up. Ne never settle, you know, you gotta keep going, right? Absolutely. And then we've done a lot more stuff like this too this year where they're adjustable. So even if you wanted to be able to like gap it off, you can. So yeah, lots of new stuff. You do really great work. Thank you. These are actually Leo's idea. Oh, fantastic. So... Yeah, but we have a lot of new, you know, trying to go a little more, you know, I went some of the old school Navajo traditional style because that's the way I learned the silversmith. You know, you go plain, you go a little fancy, you go a little, little of everything, right? Absolutely. But like this is the stuff like you were talking about those obsidian things. We slabbed it so people could cut it too. You know, that's, that's something new too. It is really unique. It's like chocolate. And some, if you get a lot of iron in it, it gets real chocolatey. If you don't, it gets real just dark black. And then we're like, okay, let's go to dinner. It was a casual case. It was all that Victorian style houses. Some fun, playful rubs. They got little skyscrapers from what you know what a skyscraper was in 1870 yep. it's just an amazing town yeah. that one's coming up in april how long have you been smithing for me mm -hmm. uh how old are you son 22 23 24 years oh wow it shows you're really good thank you did your mom teach you my dad, actually. Oh, awesome. So my dad learned, uh, I can make the really big fancy, like the one I'm wearing. Actually, where's the other one? Here's one of my very first ones. You know, don't judge me because it's kind of perfect. Oh, I never judge you. So that was one of my first ones. That is right killer. Get out of town. But you can see like right here where I... I did not do it so greatly. But yeah, that was one of my first ones right here. This is, you know, not my mom did this one. So you can see the quality difference between Nana's and mine. <laughs> but yeah, this was one of the first couple years I was learning to silversmith. But that is my traditional style right there. This is a really unique stone. It's a big honking cat's eye, man. Which, there again, something unique to our opal is the stars and the cat's eyes.
But yeah, I've, I've made some big hunk of chunk of stuff like that over the years. I don't get to do it as much as I would like anymore because the arthritis kind of gets you. So, but that's why I have these guys, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they're obviously super passionate about it. That's not. They're, they're again, all the kids are. I have one more that you maybe you'll get to meet next year. But uh, the youngest runs my restaurant most of the time. Oh, they awesome. So uh, nice to have one of, you know that does everything. What's the fashion of the restaurant? Uh, we just do like it is a restaurant in the middle of you know cowboy Idaho. So we make our own burgers. We do our own chicken. Yeah, burgers, chicken, homemade fries, that kind of stuff. Ooh. I paid twenty eight thousand dollars so I could make fancy burgers, but it works well. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you money. You probably make one of the best burger I'd ever have. I, I have been told, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to toot my own horn though, because I haven't cooked for a couple of years, but the other, uh, my cousin and my youngest run the restaurant for me in the summertime nowadays, so I just get to sit in the back and tell people what to do. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Actually, more than anything, I get to clean bathrooms and sweep floors. No! Hey, why not? I love, no, I get it. Like, I love doing dishes. Like, I am happy to sit in the back and do dishes. I am excited for that, let me tell you. <laughs> Simple things in life sometimes, I guess, huh? It's, it's the, it's, you can see your progress. You got all this stack of dirty dishes, and then all of a sudden they're gone. So, you know, instant gratification. <laughs> I have a couple really cool ones that I need to bring down to Tucson as I've been doing a lot of these little picture ones like this where you can see the little mountain scene and I have one that has a perfect panda bear in it. No way. Yeah. Is it a keeper for you? I don't... I am not a panda bear person, yeah. but I'm like, somebody will love it. You know what? Someone is and they're going to have to buy it. Exactly. So there again, that's the... But they're... There again is the t different style in stone cutting too because I'm a picture person so I like these fancy, you know, you don't have to make it pure and you know just all local. My mom's the purest. She's like, I don't want any inclusions in it. I don't want any seams in it. So there are two distinctive, you know, groups of people and I am the funky chunky kind of person. Yeah, I like the funky chunky scenes and the spots and the metals. And to me it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more authentic like you know it's a real stone because with all the synthetics and stuff like that out there nowadays you want to know that things are real definitely our show starts it's called jobs and uh, so, for the folks that might want to find you in Jogs, do you know your booth number off the top of your head? E11. We're in e the east, east wing. E11. And so you're in the middle of the aisle. I'm in the middle of the aisle. Like, if you were walking down the aisle toward the east doors, Sunwest Silver would be on your right-hand side, and I'm right dead center of the aisle. Oh, fantastic. I'm between uh, Sunwest Silver and El Dorado Sapphires. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. <laughs> you folks have been there for like 50 years, right? In Jogs? No, you you guys were one of the first at 22nd, I believe. We were right? one of the first booths that they did in 22nd Street, and we have been doing a show in Tucson for 50 years. Oh, we wow. did the convention center for years. Um, we did, at one time, we did 22nd Street and Jogs at the same time, but then my parents parents decided to mostly retire and now that the kids are old enough I think we'll probably actually go back to doing a couple booths Leo wanted to do um, Pueblo as well so mm -hmm. we might expand our horizons here in the next couple of years too. I'm really thinking the Pueblo thing would be a good idea because there's a lot of rough buyers there too mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like a lot of uh, finer quality vendors like you i think you'd fit right in well and not only that but it is uh, a lot of wholesale as yes. well and not that i don't absolutely love the retail crowd and everything like that but a lot of times when we package stuff for tucson it's done in like bigger you know like there's a dozen of these or there's you know 10 of those or something like that and i don't want people to feel like they have to buy the whole thing if that's not what they're destined to do you know mm -hmm. what i mean so in places like that where it is more wholesale that kind of already suits what i've already packaged for that not to say i still won't sell you one up but mm -hmm. <laughs> then you don't feel obliged you know what i mean absolutely you're so kind a lot of folks don't have that mindset 
Well, like I said, I was I was raised in the business with everybody where you had something for everyone because if you don't exclude any one person, then everybody can shop with you. If I'm not mistaken, your prices didn't go up in jogs from here. No, they stay the same. And I know your rent is a lot more there. It is, but <laughs> at the same time, you sell a vast amount of quantity that way. And so that does, you know, and we always do quantity discounts and that kind of stuff. If you wanted to come into jogs and you're only buying a one of, I will absolutely still sell you that. If you want to buy 40 of, Yes, the price does get better, but that is based on the wholesale quantity. And I try not to jack my prices up too high to start with, so I like to be fair. You're very, very fair. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of times last year I had a lot of small shops buying these specimens to resell. So I tried to do a lot of small things from like 25 to a couple hundred dollars. There again, it's accessible to everyone. Aaron, I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you. I, I love you so you. much. I love your whole family. I love you too, Dave. I appreciate you coming out and finding us. <laughs> um, if people wanted to get a hold of you, what's the best way? Uh, this time of year, it is always anything electronic. Email, Facebook, Instagram. We have TikTok nowadays. We're getting there. Um, the phone number won't work this time of year because we're not in the shop. That's a landline. Uh, but any of the socials are a great easy way to get a hold of us. Fantastic. And it looks like you got a widespread. I try to there again. I try to have something for everyone. If you're not an Instagram user, I got Facebook. If you're not a Facebook user, I got email. <laughs> Do me a favor. Make more videos I so I can try. fall asleep to your voice. I, oh my. <laughs> you will be the only one who's ever said that. That is not true. <laughs> you are amazing. So that's right. There again, I'll just, I'll get out the Opal instructions, just read them to people. You can sleep to that. I'm sure it'll be boring enough. <laughs> Dude, write, write a history and do like a... So we want to do a podcast. Oh, yeah. So uh, my mom always wanted to write a book about the place and she has a title for it. So I've been kind of working on some of that. Uh, it's called Once Upon a Mine. <laughs> Yo, that is great. So we want to do a podcast, but I've been trying to talk the boys into doing the speaking because, like I said, I hate the sound of my own voice. But I, apparently I do have one fan out there. Yeah, so, a you huge know, one. If Dave endorses it, we shall. Uh, but yeah, I want to do a podcast where we do kind of like a little bit of history. And then also, I know people have questions about, you know, what do I do with this or how do I do that? So I'd like to do kind of like a progressive history and then, you know, like a question and answer thing at the end. So, and get um, get each boy to do a couple chapters, exactly. a piece or something. That's, that's kind of what I'm going for because um, my boys, if you've ever seen my biological father, who was integral in starting this business way back in the day, uh, they are carbon copies of oh, wow. my dad. Like they look identical to him. So what I want to do is for like parts that would have been for him let him read out his parts oh fantastic i think that'll be pretty groovy so. i can't wait i'm expecting it now oh man <laughs> we, the we, pressure <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you 10 years uh, oh I, i'm <laughs> thinking like three months yeah okay so good I'm, I'm hoping keep to, it rolling and and i have another really big thing in the works for the summertime oh i'm excited so you, you want the you want the first uh, official scoop on that yeah 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 so yeah. uh i am a huge um you know like all my life i wanted to be indiana Jones. So there was a guy down here in New Mexico that his name was Forrest Finn. He did oh, the thing yeah. where they, we're going to do that in Idaho. We're going to put a whole bunch of the opal stuff in the box. We're going to hide the box in the forest and we're going to let you go on a treasure hunt. That is brilliant. <laughs> that is such a great idea. So we're going we're to have it. I've already got half the stuff written for it. We've already got the stuff picked out for it. No way. Um, we, we've got a whole campaign going for that and starting um, Memorial Weekend when the weather is good and it's accessible and it will be accessible to everyone. We're not going to put it somewhere where, you where, get hurt or where you're going to get hurt. You can take your six-year-old. You can take your 96-year-old. It doesn't matter. It'll be accessible to everyone. The only thing that, you know, we're going to ask is if somebody does find it, even if they don't want to be named, at least let us know so we're not still pumping out content. I think, well, like, the there's, you could get a tracker. 
Yeah. The Apple ones only last six months. Yeah. There's got to be a really boutique there's, one. There's all sorts of like, there's geotags and stuff like that out yeah. there now. So I guess you, you know. can always swap it out every six months. And well, yeah. I, I mean, if we know where it is, it's not like you can't go out there and charge battery, right? Yeah. <laughs> Does nobody follow me? <laughs> I think the person who found the Forest Finn one didn't want to be named. No, they did and not. so a lot of people were like, did it really get found? Yeah, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. There, there's a, I'm, I am a huge watcher while I work in the shop of like Destination X and like all the Josh Gates stuff. So, you know, I was watching and I was watching that the other day. I'm like, we need to do that. So, yeah, like I said, we've already got ourselves a fancy ammo can and, you know, my uh, all my sticker promotions and a couple of good specimens. You got to write the poetry. I already did. Really? I, that is my other thing. Like, I can I can talk OK. I can write really well. Oh, so. amazing. <laughs> well, it makes sense. So, yeah, I've already got uh, some of it's done in like Dr. Seuss type poetry, some of it's and that'll kind of tie in with like the podcast and everything else too. I so. cannot wait. I want to be a guest on your podcast if it's okay. You could be the first one. How's oh, that? That sounds fantastic. Even, Anytime. even if it's a call in, you got to be the first oh, one. Oh, that's fine. That? that would be amazing. We'll just call you up and be like, Dave, it's your time to shine. Yo, for real. For once, you get to be the interviewer. Yeah. Like you, you get to the questions on you. Yeah. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you. Well, we love you too. We appreciate you doing all the stuff that you do for us. Like I said, I am, I was immensely impressed by the amount of people that came into the store this year just because they saw you do it. So we appreciate everything that you did for us. Thank you. Appreciate it. You can adopt me. I'll be your adopted son. Uh, hey, look, all, these, <laughs> I, all you gotta do is jump behind the booth, man. You're I don't fine. think they have a big enough suit. I, I, you don't need to see, look, look at the way I'm dressed. You know, <laughs> basically acquainted to you as being boss. Yeah, see, uh, there you go. Yeah. These, these, these guys are just the workers, then I look important, you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. You need a new bag? <laughs> Rocks down. Rocks down. I got bags and people with long legs that go fast. <laughs> so. <laughs> Love you so much. We can't wait to see you in jobs. I will see you there. Sure.